down on a Chattanooga gang. Yeah, a grand jury invited more, indicted more than 50 gang members using a state law that allows police to bust ongoing criminal business. Now, we have team coverage tonight. Kayla Strayer will explain that state law. And Hannah Lawrence will tell us how we got here since a key witness's murder before a gang member's murder trial. But first, Stephanie Sanastasi joins us live from the courthouse where a news conference was held just hours ago. Stephanie. Josh, yeah, inside this courthouse here behind me is where police and District Attorney Neil Pinkston announced those indictments publicly. Now, more than four dozen gang members face charges with violating the state's RICO Act and also in connection to five of the city's homicides. For many families, this day means closure. Pictures taken by the Chattanooga Police Department show cop cars lining the street early this morning as the arrest for these gang members began. It was an entire team effort between federal, local, and state authorities. In total, a grand jury indicted 54 Athens Park Bloods. Seven of those were also charged in five of the city's unsolved homicides, which included the kidnapping and murder of Bianca Horton. Her brother, Derek Shaw, spoke at the news conference this afternoon. It was a great day. It was a great feeling. But at the end of the day, my family is not the only one that's hurting. The others is hurting as well. The district attorney's office says this is the first time a criminal street gang in Hamilton County is being prosecuted as a criminal enterprise under the state's RICO law. Most of us are state actors, so we, we decided to bring it to the Hamilton County Grand Jury as opposed to the federal Grand Jury. Chattanooga Police Chief David Roddy says the planning for this began several weeks ago. Tonight, he's thankful to bring some closure to mourning families in this community. This started when acts of violence occurred in our community. This started when families were impacted by the senseless act of violence by the individuals that we have been working to change the behavior of. Under RICO, it means that an organization is a business, which means they need to be making money. Now, today during that news conference, I asked District Attorney what that business was and what these gang members were doing to make money. He says that part is still under investigation. Reporting live tonight in Hamilton County, Stephanie Sanastasi, News Channel 9. Stephanie, thank you. The DA's office says the Athens Park Bloods started out on the south side, but now gang members are all over. The creator of the gang, Willie Edgar Bush, known to many as Larry Bush, is currently serving a life sentence in Colorado. In 2016, his son, Ladarius Bush, was shot in a home on 7th Avenue. At the time, police said the gang had deep family ties. Several of the gang members arrested were involved in a high-profile murder case. Hannah Lawrence joins us now to tell us what led up to this. Hannah? Josh and Ali, it's actually multiple high profile murder cases. One of the men in today's detailed report was found guilty of a 2015 murder. Now police say they believe he killed another man before that. Here's how it's all connected. January of 2015, one woman dead, two people shot, including this innocent baby suddenly paralyzed. These cowards shot a baby. In April of last year, Cortez Sims was found guilty of pulling the trigger in that shooting that killed Talitha Bowman. Tonight, he's accused of murder again, but for a shooting that happened a year before this one. The DA says he murdered 13-year-old Deontre Southers in 2014. There was a beef between Bounty Hunter During his first trial, prosecutors talked about Sims' affiliation with the Athens Park Bloods. They said one of the men he shot in 2015, seen here on the floor, was a member of a rival gang. Marcel Christopher refused to testify in Sims' trial. At that point, Christopher was the only witness of that shooting left. The victim died of one or more gun, gunshot wounds. Baby Zoe's mother, Bianca Horton, was murdered just weeks before she was supposed to testify in Sims' case. Police said it was related to other crimes back then. There's every reason to believe that it is gang-related, and it's, there's a good possibility it's related to other incidents. Now, a year later, Horton's accused murderers are named in today's announcement. As you saw just a moment ago, Bianca Horton's brother spoke to the media about today's announcement. We asked him how baby Zoe is doing, and he said she is doing wonderful. Josh. Thank you, Hannah. As we mentioned before, police were able to go after this gang using a state RICO law. Kayla Strayer is live now to explain just how it works. Kayla. Yeah, Ali, Josh, good evening. So the way it's written now, the state RICO law is allowing officers to go after gang members a bit easier and potentially get stricter sentences for their crimes. The 
law defines the gangs as criminal enterprises and makes being a member of a gang a crime. The penalty for certain crimes is also longer. We spoke to Hamilton County criminal court clerk Vince Dean about this law. He worked to get it expanded back in 2012. He says to his knowledge, this is the first time it's being used in the state of Tennessee. Before 2012, each individual would have had to have been charged with an individual crime, and there would have been no way to connect the individuals together to show that they were, in fact, organized crime. Okay. This law allows the law enforcement to show that. Chattanooga today should be able to serve as a model for other district attorneys throughout the state moving forward. Reporting live in downtown Chattanooga, Kayla Strayer, News Channel 9. Thank you, Kayla. Coming up at 6, more on the RICO law and why local agencies are praising the work of Vince Dean and others who made these arrests possible. You may remember the Atlanta case where educators were convicted of cheating on standardized tests. RICO was used to indict former and current Atlanta public school officials in that case. Jurors agreed the educators were guilty of racketeering and conspiring together. Tonight, still no answers on why there was a heavy police presence at a big